Here's a quick exercise. You ask someone for help. Could you help me? Could you help me? There are a few possible responses. Listen. What does each response express? Could you please help me? Yeah. Could you please help me? Yeah. Could you please help me? Yeah. All three times it's the same word, but the intonation communicates a different meaning, right? Yeah. This first response sounds certain. It uses falling intonation. Yeah. The second one is affirmative but with enthusiasm. It uses a rise fall. It shows stronger emotion. The person's basically saying, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. That last response sounds hesitant because it uses a fall rise. The person's basically saying, yeah, but I need to know exactly what you want first. I'll probably agree, maybe, but tell me more. Yeah. In this lesson, we'll review and practice fall rise intonation, and we'll begin to consider some differences between formal and informal intonation. Learn intonation patterns in English with Jennifer. In our previous lesson, we practiced a fall rise intonation pattern. It's when our voice drops from a higher pitch to a low one and then rises a little. As in, yeah, hmm, yeah. I explained how we use the fall rise intonation pattern a few different ways. We can use a fall rise after introductory words and in the middle of a sentence to signal that there's more to come. Here's an example. When you need help, who can you turn to? When you need help, who can you turn to? Help. Hmm. When you need help, who can you turn to? We can use a fall rise intonation pattern in lists as an alternative to rising intonation. Here's an example. We can count on family, friends, and even neighbors. Family, friends, and even neighbors. And we can use a fall rise when we're counting, perhaps to sound more certain or more authoritative, as in one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. I've also mentioned that we can use a fall rise to suggest hesitancy for some reason. Many speakers use a fall rise on the word well, as in, hmm, well, let me think. Well, let me think. You try the fall rise pattern. Repeat after me. We'll use a fall rise to sound hesitant. No, not really. No, not really. No, not really. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. She may say yes, but don't count on it. She may say yes, but don't count on it. She may say yes, but don't count on it. That's true, but it's not always the case. 
That's true, but it's not always the case. That's true, but it's not always the case. I can help, but only if it's in the morning. I can help, but only if it's in the morning. I can help, but only if it's in the morning. Here's a new use. You might also hear fall rise intonation in polite speech. Compare two introductions. Imagine I'm your tour guide. Listen. Hi, I'm Jennifer and I'll be your tour guide. Hello, I'm Jennifer and I'll be your tour guide. The two introductions were similar but different. Which one sounded more polite, more formal? The second one. Which one used a fall rise intonation pattern? The second one. Listen again. I said, Hi, I'm Jennifer and I'll be your tour guide. Hi, rise fall. I'm Jennifer, little rise, hello rise, and I'll be your tour guide. Falling intonation. The second time I said, hello, fall rise. I'm Jennifer, fall rise, I'm Jennifer, and I'll be your tour guide, falling. So both the rise and the fall rise suggest that there's more to come, and I end with falling intonation. Now you try the fall rise pattern to sound more polite. Repeat after me. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Who's next, please? Who's next, please? Where could I find Mr. Taylor? Where could I find Mr. Taylor? Excuse me, what time is it? Excuse me, what time is it? We'll end with a special exercise. Here's a text. As you can see, it's not complete. Feel free to pause and write down your own ideas to complete it. Now I'll read the text with my own word choices. But first, let's look together and decide where could we use a fall rise intonation pattern. In these places. Remember, a fall rise can suggest that there's more to come. Our thought is not finished yet. We could also use a low rise, some rising intonation, also to suggest that there's more to come. But we're going to practice this text with fall rise intonation in these places. I like to play the piano. Sadly, I only have a keyboard. What's more, I don't have much time to play. I wish I could play my music more often, but I guess I should just make the time. It's your turn now. Practice reading the text with your own ideas, but be sure to practice the fall rise intonation pattern in the right places. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and happy studies.